to preface this with a couple of quick hits so that you understand the scale of what I'm about to talk about. And these next two stories are going to be about the state repression that is being organized against anarchists and socialists. And this is in a country where uh, Joe Biden has recently said he is okay with COVID relief funds being used to hire more cops. And also, um, I, I wanted to point out, uh, Joe Biden has doubled funding for a police hiring program. Uh, the Office of Community Oriented Policing Services uh, uh, as a, as a component of the DOJ that in, administers grants to state and local uh, police forces to hire cops. And Biden has more than doubled its funding in his budget request for the fiscal year 2022. This year's uh, enacted funding is one, 156.5 million. Biden requested 388. So let me con compare that. Trump's last budget for, high, for this police pro, policing program was 157 million. Under Joe Biden, it has increased to 388. And this again was after a summer of mass mobilization and protests where uh, you know, a not insignificant number of people were shouting and chanting and demanding to defund the police. The police state is ballooning under Joe Biden and you know the big danger of that is a lot of liberals who are now hey, go, let's take a nap and go to brunch are completely ignoring this um and again this is something we saw under obama too he really came after whistleblowers he expanded the war on terror to many many more countries and a lot of the latent anti-establishment um voices uh that uh from the liberal side were basically just uh kind of muted themselves for four years um, now, granted, we live in a very different time nowadays. Uh, you know, the progressive left, uh, leftists in general, have a much stronger footing in the U.S. than they used to. But it's also worth noting, you know, uh, so Joe, the Joe Biden's administration has come out very strong against extremism, but they've they've basically taken this position of like we have to defend the center from extremists on the left and the right, uh, and now with like this newly entrenched, newly well-funded police state, um, what exactly does that mean? And let, let's talk a little bit about what that means. Um, and uh, there was this uh, um, document that just came out from Joe Biden's anti-terrorism initiative that classifies anarchist violent extremists that oppose all forms of capitalism, corporate globalization, and governing institutions, which are perceived as harmful to society, as domestic violent extremists. And it puts them in the same category as right-wing militias and neo-Nazis. Um, they also point out, uh, and th this is probably like similarly egregious, you know, animal rights, environmental extremists, which you know, in the 90s, they were known for like doing a little bit of property destruction, but this is not on the same scale as groups like the Boogaloo or, uh, you know, the Three Percenters um, or Adam Waffen, you know. Um, and uh, the, the document it describes or it describes or it defines the violent, the domestic violent extremists are U.S. based actors who conduct or threaten activities that are dangerous to human life in violation of the criminal laws of the United States, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It does clarify mere advocacy of political or social positions, political activism, use of strong rhetoric or generalized philosophic embrace of violent tactics may not constitute violent extremism and may be constitutionally projected. Or protected, while the majority of domestic violent extremists fall into one threat category, some draw upon or inspired by ideological themes found in other threat categories. But again, it is really worth pointing out, like that that line, um, again, is still very muddled and st still very blurry. You know, uh, the local anarchist who spends most of their time uh, tending to the community garden, like if they throw um you know a water balloon or a rock at um you know neo-nazi or even even a cop does that make them a terrorist all of a sudden like i i under this provision it would you are really opening the door to criminalize 
a lot of this uh, protest activity. And, you know, I know a lot of people, um, when, thing, when uh, you know, Facebook was really clamping down on, uh, you know, the QAnon people in the right wing after January 6th, there were a lot of, some people in like progressive YouTube circles who were like, well, you don't, don't, there's free speech absolutism. If you, you know, they're going to clamp down on them, they'll clamp down on us. And it's like, you got to understand your history. Like this, we've been here before and we've been here in way more ex extreme positions before, uh, they're always going to suppress the left. Always. Uh, we, we've reported on stories in the last couple of years, you know, Google's algorithms uh, trying to, you know, restrict traffic to places like the World Socialist website. Uh, you know, we had a situation out in Portland where, uh, you know, a, a anti-fascist activist uh, d d did some armed self-defense against somebody in Patriot Prayer. And uh, the U.S. state basically just, uh, uh, you know, uh, executed him in blind daylight. Uh, it's a big rallying cry for a lot of the fascist types out in the north Northwest. The left is always going to be suppressed, it always has been suppressed, and it always is going to be. Uh, so, you know, keep in mind, like this, both sides isms are being used in a very strategic way. It's like it will enable a lot of right wing extremists to keep talking the talk and you know because we've seen in practice that you know the american police force you know they will stand by stand back and stand by with violent right-wing extremists if they're armed if they're uh you know threatening if they're aggressive um you know a left-wing protester at like a black lives matter a bit throws a water bottle and not that they're being violent bring out the tear gas bring out the rubber bullets we are going to see this play out in such a way. I really think that like now, like, again, we live in a surveillance state. Think about like, be very careful about a protest from now on. Cause like next time, like a bottle is thrown, they might try to track you down. And, and now all of a sudden you're a domestic violent extremist. And uh, by the way, socialists, this is mostly talking about anarchists. Don't, don't worry, you're not gonna be left out. We'll talk about that in the next story. It is worth it. It is interesting to me that the Biden administration and this document focuses more on anarchists than it does socialists. And if you know your history, like all of us have all been kind of in the same bubble getting persecuted. But historically, a lot in the past, they focused a lot more on socialists and communists who were doing a lot with the organized labor movement. Um, it's something I like to point out. Before Bernie Sanders popped out of the ether in 2015, I didn't know any socialists in my personal life, but I knew a lot of anarchists. And whatever, wherever you are in the political spectrum, you know, whether you're a Marxist Leninist or you're an anarchist or you're some other form of communist, anarchists deserve, deserve an incredible amount of respect for keeping the fire lit, fire of American leftism lit during the dark ages, you know, really, uh, at, at a time where like there really wasn't much anti capitalist resistance except for from those folks. Those were the folks who were out, you know, fighting against the WTO in the late 90s and, and we were organizing Occupy in 2011. But, you know, they are really coming strong after a lot of these people they preserve, per, you know, perceive as like, you know, anti foot terrorists and stuff. Um, you know, even though Joe Biden, in his credit uh, at one of the debates, said, like, you know, it's an idea, not an organization, um, you know, it's kind of like, yeah. Well, you don't need to call it an organization if you're going to classify them as, you know, think of like black identity extremists. It didn't say Black Lives Matter is a terrorist organization, but they did say, well, there's a certain kind of terrorist that ascribes to like a black identity. And, blah, blah, blah. and they're basically doing the same thing now with anarchists. And uh, I wanted to read from this article from The Intercept where it's like, oh, yeah, socialists are indeed in the same boat. And uh uh, although this comes from a, a different branch of the American government, it does paint an overall narrative that the government is really trying to paint a sour picture of nation leftist movements uh, to be perceived as the enemy, to be perceived as, perceived as something that uh, needs to be fought against. Um, so this is an article from The Intercept. Uh, hold on here, let me pull it up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, this is an article from The Intercept, uh, basically a leaked military document. 
Um, and this is, this is published on the 22nd. Uh, U.S. military training document says socialists represent terrorist ideology. Um, a Na Navy counterterrorism training document obtained exclusively by The Intercept appears to conflate socialists with terrorists and lists the left-wing ideolo ideology alongside neo-Nazis. A section in a training document subtitled Study Questions includes the following. Anarchists, socialists, and neo-Nazis represent which terrorist ideolo ideological category? The correct answer is political terrorists, a military source briefed in the training told me. The document, titled Introduction to Terrorism slash Terrorist Operations, is part of a longer training manual recently disseminated by the Naval Education Training and Command's Navy Tactical Training Center in conjunction with the Center for Security Forces. The training is designed for masters at arms, the Navy's internal police, the military source said. It's just uh, ineffective training because whoever is directing the Navy anti-terror curriculum would rather vilify the left than actually protect anything, said the military official, who is not authorized to speak publicly despite the fact that the most prominent threat is domestic right-wing terror. Both the FBI and the Department of Homeland Security have identified uh, white supremacists as the deadliest terror threat to the United States. In October 2020, the Department of Homeland Security issued its first annual home Homeland Threat Assessment report, stating that white supremacists were exceptionally lethal and will continue to be the most persistent and lethal threat in the homeland. In September, FBI Director Christopher Wray, in testimony before the Senate Judiciary Committee, said that white supremacists have been responsible for the most lethal attacks over the last decade, and that they comprise the biggest chunk of our domestic terrorism portfolio. <clears throat> Spokesman uh, for the Chief, uh, uh, Chief of Naval Personnel provided the following statement. Uh, the training guide is part of the approved curriculum for anti-terrorism officer training courses. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, asked about the debate over how to respond to the domestic terror threat, Kevin Klein, a former FBI assistant special agent in charge at the Bureau's New Haven field office, agreed that the white supremacist threat was serious, but warned that any response must, be re must respect constitutionally protected activity like speech. No matter what we do in responding to the domestic terrorism problem, the Constitution cannot be a casualty. Going on, uh, while the right has been vocal with its concerns about being unfairly targeted for political opinions, media coverage of the Biden administration's focused on domestic extremism has paid considerably less attention to what it might mean for movements on the left, including, anti uh, uh, including Black Lives Matter, anti-fascists, and the environmental movement. In fact, internal FBI documents uh, reported on uh, by The Intercept in 2019 specifically lists anarchists and environmental extremists among its counterterrorism priorities. Ray testified last year to Congress that Antifa is an ideology rather than an organized group. A widely reported rebuttal of claims by President Donald Trump that Antifa is a terrorist organization. In the same testimony, Ray also stressed the Bureau was pursuing any number of properly predicated investigations into what we would describe as violent anarchist extremists. And while he rebutted baseless claims that Antifa had instigated the January 6th assault on the Capitol, Ray also said that doesn't mean we are not looking and will continue to look. As The Intercept reported in a recent series, the Justice Department's handling of domestic terrorism can often be arbitrary and disproportionate to any threat its targets may pose. One example of this is that Black activist groups, which as former FBI agent Mike German pointed out, the FBI has been targeting for many years. In 2019, and again, this talks about like the Black identity extremist uh, idea and, and uh, issues that we reported on uh, last year and uh, years before. <clears throat> anyway, um, the FBI's Orion Fisk program was concerning enough that then Representative uh, Cedric Richmond uh, grilled the FBI director about it in 2019. It was far from the only time during the Trump administration that Democrats expressed concerns that national security st uh, state was targeting groups on the political left. But those concerns have waned under the Biden administration, despite an intensified focus on domestic extremists that could also include, include groups on the left, as the Navy document suggests. 
According to the military source, the training materials also include a Black Panther's fist symbol on a slide of terror orgs with Al-Qaeda. And most of you have probably seen the, the uh, raised fist symbol in our organizing circles. And this basically, a military training document equates that with a terrorist symbol, just so you know. Equating Klein's concerns about constitutional rights are, are echoing Klein's concerns. A senior Defense Department official familiar with the development of the military's domestic extremism program said that defining extremism in a way that respects First Amendment rights was proving exceptionally difficult. An internal Pentagon draft document proposing language to define extremism, reviewed by The Intercept, is three pages long. The tortured language reflecting attempts not to violate the First Amendment, according to the senior uh, Defense Department official. The Pentagon appears to be aware of the constitutional ri risks. A separate internal Pentagon document about the definition of extrem extremism states, as appealing as the concept of one sentence definition may be, this would carry both practical and legal risks. A single sentence definition crafted too narrowly might fail to prohibit actions that threaten the department's ability to carry out its mission. A less specific definition, on the other hand, risks being so vague as to prohibit or chill constitutionally protected conduct by service members. So, you know, we will keep our eye on the situation as it progresses, but, you know, um, we don't want to be too alarmist on the show, but it, I really think it is important to inform my listening audience, especially those uh, who consider themselves socialists or anarchists or have friends who do, that uh, the government uh, has a very thin line. And if you engage in activity they consider violent, they might consider you a terrorist. And it is important to talk about like, what does the government consider violent? You know, it considers an insurrection violent. It considers throwing a plastic bottle violent. It doesn't consider poisoning Flint residents violent. It doesn't consider withholding health care from millions of people violent. It doesn't consider uh, withholding COVID vaccines from thousands of people violent. It doesn't consider um, people going hungry and dying of starvation violent. It doesn't consider drone bombing innocent people all over the world violent. The domestic violent extremists really are at the helm of the U.S. government. And while many of them, uh, the more proto-fascist groups, uh, want to stir up trouble, want to uh, attack people they have been brainwashed into thinking they're, uh, they are uh, our enemies, they're our enemies of uh, working class socialists and anarchists, um, it really is the people up at the top who are really engaging in most of the violent extremism, extremism here in the world. So we're going to close out the show. Um, if you're listening to the radio, stay tuned. We are about to do a presentation that really ties into all the issues we were just talking about, this kind of resurgence of, uh, I call it neo-McCarthyism. Um, but stay tuned. Um, Empire Files, anti-communism, America's official religion, really goes into the deeper history of all of this stuff, of uh, the government's attempts to re repress left-wing movements. Um, and if you're watching on Facebook, check out that video. I highly recommend it. Um, until next time, we're going to go ahead and close out the show. Thank you for listening. Uh, you can find us on Facebook. You can find us uh, on our YouTube channel. And please listen to us on the radio at 89.1 WIDR. Until next time, everybody, keep on fighting for that revolution solution.